Synth sorcery. Mixing techniques for techno. That's today's video. You ready? Let's go do it right now. Yo, check it out. I'm in the kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Hang around till the end of this video. I'll tell you all about Discord, about Patreon, about the dance carousel that we're doing, the challenge that I have. So feast your ears and eyes on this. The mixing techniques for techno is not so much sitting behind a mixing console and EQing and tweaking stuff. We're talking about mixing in the sense that a DJ would mix it. It's a bit of a hybrid video talking about how to get with a setup and how to set yourself up to do a live performance. So you're thinking, I want to bring different boxes to the stage. Today I've got two, the Octodrack and the Dirty Wave Mate Tracker. Completely new setup. I've got a um, Minilog XD as well to play some bits over the top just to spice things up a little bit and to be actually live because this is a problem that I saw happen. Sometimes I'm performing, but am I really playing that live? Is live really that live? You can debate that. I mean, if you have got something to say about it, leave it uh, in the comment section below. What is live? People show up with an S1, S4, S whatever controller with tractor and they say, I'm playing live. Then somebody else is just only playing with filters. They're playing live. So there's so many different um, interpretations of what live is. In my honest opinion, the coolest way of playing live is you show up, you just noodle with stuff on the fly and whatever comes out comes out then again i how, however much i love that concept i am too chicken shit to really do it to be honest because uh, there's certain records that i have performed there's certain records people know me from so i want to be a little bit not predictable might be not the best word the right phrase to use it but that's, you want to um yeah get some recognizable bits in there so i will have to find a way in between what I do, what I want to sound like and what you can buy or find online in terms of the music that I'm doing in that performance. I don't want to milli vanilli my way out of there and just like completely fake what, whatever is happening, right? Okay, now, so the mixing is that. Let's head over to my very, very sparse setup. This might be the sparsest setup to date. And let's see if we can actually get the ball rolling. Are you ready for that? Fasten your seatbelts, buckle up, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Today the setup is very, very small. I wanted to go for a little bit of a structure where the stuff that I'm doing uh, has to make sense. Now, I've got the theme coming from the Dirty Wave Mate tracker right here, uh, which I got decked out with new caps and new clicky knobs, which is cool. The clicky knobs are... Woo, nice. So clicky knobs, um, the Octatrack is here, taking care of the drums. Then there is the Minilog XD, which is just there for playing some live stuff. Filter it down. So that's there. So I can play something live because I want to I wanna be also doing stuff live, right? So not just wielding the knobs and wielding the filter. Now, what I've got is got drums and they're all sitting here and they're all being um, yeah, fired in live mute mode, which is the mode where you get to if you have function and you use the up and down arrow keys when you're not on the MIDI page, because this is a different page here, but when you're on the MIDI page, um, when you're on the, on the normal page, there's different things that you can select. So it's chromatic. Uh, this whole thing uh, turns into a keyboard with which you can play stuff um, when you've got MIDI connected to the Octatrack. Um, for now, I'm going to go to live mute mode, otherwise it will mean I have to just like use function and um, and the tracks that I'm on, eight tracks sitting here, track one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I have to just like physically mute them that way. But with live mute mode, it is very simple. So we've got quick mute, quick mute mode actually. So here it is. So the first eight tracks are my drums. 
track 9 on to 16 are MIDI tracks, but I'm not using the Octatrack for MIDI. Even this is just biased lonesome. I'm wielding it the way I'm wielding it. So I've got one loop playing already. Let's open the Octatrack, of which I've got the stereo output, same as I do with the MPC. As you follow the channel, you know this. My kick will always come out separately. So the kick is on one, the red fader here. The green fader is not being used, but this next stop is the stereo fader. And now it's got this quirky thing where one. I only want to use even numbers for my stereo tracks, so there you go. So tracks three and four, as you can hear. This is a stereo loop coming out of the Octatrack, right? So there's a kick sitting here, a hat sitting there. So let's see what we have in terms of drums, right? Kick with a tom, close hat, clap, open hat, Right symbol, and then this, how shall I put it, these horses that are click, 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 click doing this. And then there's a theme that I use as a transition thing, so I can, I can use this. You know, so I've got always something going on if the mate decides to not play or whatever. Um, now the mate is getting a clock from the Octatrack, so it's already running. And the, the cool thing is that I can opt to go for a um, cool setup. Now what I've done is usually on the mate you can use uh, this song mode that I'm in right now. I'm, I've got it on live mode so now that I can can just hit certain things and it will work. So it works from left to right. It works with phrases and it works. This is the live mix mode. So if I go in I'll go to the pattern here. So I have to go shift and right. I'll get into the first pattern. Now I have to lay down four 16 step um, uh, sequences, if you will, or bars or patterns, if you will. So it will play up down as soon as I hit it to go play. So this is how I do it. Now, what you usually do is you see some FE, so I don't know if you can make it out on the screen. I promise in the future I'll just connect the monitor to it, but lack of time. So the FEs are the last step in the mate process. If you just go up and down with edit, you can just like tell the different numbers to hold different information, um, which is like on here, it is a synthesizer that is the FM synth. And then there's certain things that you can do with that as well, the way I have it. And there's drums, there's everything. I literally got a few um, of those phrases engaged and I'm not playing them so that it plays as a song because usually it will play as a song it will just like keep continue playing continue playing continue playing and what i want is i want to um, individually um uh, get to where the beats and the stuff and the, and the stuff is right where my music is so the first track because this um, little machine consists of eight tracks and you can randomly place stuff there um, at will if you will uh, i'm using uh, a bass line on track one because if you know me, I'm always with my bass line. So let's build up the track and let's keep it very simple. Now the mixing techniques is you need to just have everything work neatly, closely together. That's where we want to go with this, right? Okay, so what we're going to do is play a kick. Two, three, four. Then now I can play my kick like. Bam, bam, kudu, kudu, bam. It, immediately you hear that I've got a little bit of a tom situation going on in the kick. If I record arm the kick drum, which is a song track one, I record arm it, you'll see one, two, and then around the middle step, nine, 13, this is where the kicks are obviously, eight and 10 are playing something. And it's also coming out of this kick output. Boom, So I'm gonna take my horses out. You can clearly hear it. So there's a bit of a low end content already in this bottom end of the of the groove. So I know that I can instant in, in, I can instantly dance to this, right? It's not too sparse, not too uh, naked. Okay, that's cool. Now I think I'm liking this. Out of the stereo output, there's the rest of the drums are coming. So we'll build up the drums and we'll play a close up. Okay, so now that I know that everything is set up, I've got my close hat playing, um, I've got the kick playing, I've got this little bit of ear candy playing. Um, yeah, things 
all right, cool. I can set myself up to just go and think like, okay, what is next? Level this out a bit. What is going to be next? Um, let's quickly talk about the ABC category that I've got going on right here. Kick A category, very important. As are the hats. But the kick and the tom, very much A category. This thing, in order to feel the groove and to feel the rhythm, you don't really need this kind of ear candy kind of vibe, but you know, this is This is giving you a, great, a good sense of where the groove is going, right? Okay, cool. So with the horseback, I collect them. Now I'm going to move over to my mate and see if I can play a bass. Now I've got two of them on track one. I've got two different phrases engaged. I've got phrase 12 engaged and phrase 10 engaged. 10 will play a melody and I've deliberately used four chords. For some reason, if you want to make something that people recognize, it's cool to play a four chord um, sequence. Um, but to initially get into the groove, you'll play a one chord. This one is playing right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my FE, my blank um, phrase. I'll play it so I know that's blinking. And then one, two, three, it will stop. So now nothing's playing. I can safely open up the faders. And I know like, okay, cool. Everything's set up. Three, four. Now we're going to engage that bass line again. So you'll hear it. One, two, one, two, three, bass. Nice one. Nice. Build up the drums a little bit more. Hats and snare or clap. Now what I want to do is play more drums. So on track three, I've got some more hats playing like. Neatly spacing out the track, going in certain direction. I don't really need much because I want everything to just like sit where it sits. Now the hats sit neatly on top of this machine. You have to figure out what the frequency range of this thing is and what this thing is so that you don't have two separate sounds that don't work. Let's move on to a different section of the song, like so. Bass. 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 So now I've got a melody going, I have four chords, right? Two, three. Chord one, chord two, chord three, chord four, right? Okay, so then I got an idea of where the track is going. Now you need some sort of a lead as well. well first play, got some reverb on my drums as well. Play open hat. Go back in, play those chords again. Nice. Now, I'm, this is all the different uh, possibilities that you can do. I'm not performing, I'm just telling you how I'm working it. Hence me jumping from idea to idea so that you get it. But usually I will just have a, a more coherent sort of structure. Now, on this bass line that I can get to by only shift right, right, right. Now all of a sudden I'm in the page of the FM synth that I've used for bass. I can see at the bottom of the page I've got a low pass sitting there with resonance. And there's a little bit of filter on there. Now I will go down to where it says reverb, that's three um, 
different uh, cool effects that you can use, chorus, delay, and reverb. I'll take out my kick. I will go in and hold, edit. Now if I use my finger, all of a sudden, I can add and subtract reverb or do that without almost being to use the filter. So that's cool. In, dramatic, and out. How cool is that? So that's what I'm loving with, with the mate as well, right? Okay, so only shift, going back out, come back on my live page. Now it's time to add a synthesizer. Like so. Same thing, go in, go to the edit page, go down, find a reverb, same thing. Woo! Bam, bam, go in. like it right so it's fairly simple it's a very simple concept so and then you start playing your strings Now, just to mute this synthesizer that's playing, I will go down to my FE on track two and play it. Cool, now I can go back out. And now if you've got more synths or more samples that you want to use, it's easy to go. You just go there. Now, to get out of the melody mode, I go back to the ostinato, that same bass, and it stays on the same thing. It goes like. Now, there's a lot of things that you can do with a setup like this that a regular DJ can't do. One of the things that I love about this approach is if you were to DJ as a regular USB DJ, your initial switches are always going to be um, more intensity in the music means more intensity in the drums if the track just allows that. So building up your set would always mean that there's more intensity going in the bottom end and then whoa well after an hour everything is louder now for this i can just swap out the drums so what i've done with the octa track here is all the different banks going up i don't have a lot but well 11 banks already they'll just go up in intensity which means that underneath what's playing here i can swap the sound so if this needs to be played on a beach during the day I'll probably just go with less aggressive drums. If this is in the night, I'll just go with more aggressive drums. So let's see what bank we have. Let's go to, say to bank four, better one. You can hear there's more intensity right here. Cool. Play this, play this. So now it's a completely different vibe here, right? So this is absolutely what I love. Now I've made sure that I don't have to tamper with EQ on the mixer. I don't have to tamper with sounds here. That basically means get great sounds out of the box, right? Okay, so if we're gonna take this uh, stuff out, let's focus on the drums that we got right here. Two, three, and see? Again, so let's play those drums. Let's see what we have. Same trick. Different snare this time, so the clap just got swapped out for a um, uh, snare. Still the same close hat. 
Ah, now there's a little bit of loop. To get tap 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 tap. So now stuff starts to get interesting already, right? Cool. And then here, 909 open head, classic. Nothing on six. And again, a transition thing on seven. So if I want to go into something else. So that, that never plays unless I'm getting out of the track, loading up a new thing here or something else, someplace else, and just go there basically, right? So that's what I'm doing. So let's um, see if we can open this up. Whoa, three, four, two, three, in. And this is fun because I'll take this thing home, I'll just play that arpeggio on the, on the, uh, on the, on the bed or whatever where I'm sitting uh, on the couch. I'm just playing that thing. That's just literally three tracks. This thing forces me to think very uh, simple. I don't have to complicate myself into thinking, okay, let's go there, let's do this, or let's do that. It's a very interesting concept. Here we go. So the drums fit underneath nicely, right? Alright, cool. Let's mute this. Mute it here. And then see if we can swap it out, play a bit of a, a stir. Nice one. How simple is this? Transitioning is very easy when you play something like this, right? Now, let's play here. One, two, three, and nothing. Nope. Thought something was playing, but nothing's playing. I think it's 50. There you go. Different bank, play some different drums here. See, and that's basically how I set it up. So, very simple. Okay. Try it yourself and see how this works out for you, right? Um, this is just a simple concept. I will already say I'm not the master when it comes to this um, Dirty Wave Made Tracker, but it's early days with it for me. But I'm, I'm loving it though, you know what I mean? I think this is something I could use in myself. <laughs> if I can only bring this to the stage, well, probably gonna like that. Kick out. Sit out. Transition like so.
Line one, two, three, four, different scene. Boom. Also, as I said, it's still very early. Very, very. <laughs> it's still very early days with the mate tracker over on my side. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. I didn't show you the mixer page. I didn't show you on how you can put some LFOs on there, what synths are in there. So I know, I know, but I really love the thing. Uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, thanks though to Tim at Dirty Wave because um, mine was faulty for some reason it didn't really work I sent it to America they shipped it back in time so now we're making a video with it so Tim if you're watching thanks ever so much I think I might see you at Superbooth I'm not sure okay now this is going to be a cool 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 thing is it not Yes, I think it is. Thank you for watching if you made it this far into the video. Now, there's a support platform, which is Patreon. On Patreon, you can support me if you love what you see, you like what you hear, and it's a cool vibe. There's a cool community of like-minded synth nerds, um, and we talk shop. We don't do it on Patreon per se, but there is a bridge that Patreon has provided into Discord, and that's the cool part. So in Discord, we talk synths, gas and I throw out my challenges right there and the challenge that we have right now is something I came up with that I call the dance carousel that's a cool thing it's an eight bar segment that you have to produce you play some sort of a lead or some sort of a groove over the top this is just your signature but you'll only pass on the groove to the next producer on which that producer is going to put his signature sound his signature lead and then takes it to his beat and then gives the beat up you get the idea so there's a nice sort of like carousel of beats going and we're trying to see how long we can actually make it can we get this thing to go into a full-fledged production which is maybe six seven minutes long but only consists of eight bar uh, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be that sparse but you know you get the idea and the crowd is going to film it so next week hopefully I can show you what it looks like I think um, uh, Brian has done an absolutely amazing job and then passed it on to Master D. Now Master D passed it on to Pavlov Straight Dog. So I know for, uh, that, um, that that's something that's going to happen. So I'm not sure where it's going next, but it looks like it's going in the right direction. Now, if, if this is something that you love, do sign up Patreon. Not only that, if you're making music, you just knew you're not really getting to a specific point or you got more questions than you have answers you can get in touch with me as well we can have a sit down we can have a chat we can have a talk and you know it's always good to just like see uh, a perspective and some light at the end of the tunnel well that's me thank you for watching uh, and i'll catch you next week on another video i'm in the kitchen and i'm out peace